Jason Gilbo here with Nick Tassa taking a look at some GPP bats for tonight's 13 game slate. Uh, after kind of a crummy day of pitching yesterday, we finally got some good arms. But uh, overall, I mean, tons of offensive areas where you can target. Yeah, when you have 13 games, like you said, there is a lot of opportunity to have bad starting pitchers. And although there is a slew of really good ones on the slate, there are also a few ones you can target. Yep. Looking at catcher here first, um, I, I like somewhat paying down here tonight. Um, and there's a couple of cheap guys that I don't mind doing it with. Uh, Wilson Contreras uh, in uh, Chicago, wind is blowing out. I mean, they got a seven uh, run team total there. Mm -hmm. He should be hitting, you know, fifth or sixth in that lineup. Um, and he's cheap. I mean, I know I like to target him more against lefties, but uh, Royal's been reverse split so far this year, and he's a fly ball pitcher, so should be in for some trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I like that play. A couple other guys that I, I was keeping an eye on would be uh, JT Realmuto. He's not really in a great matchup, but he does hit lefties well. It's a little bit higher in the order than most catchers. Um, and then also Yadier Molina. Both guys are kind of priced mid-range. Yeah, and I've had prices on both of those. I mean, um, going up against Keiko, a little rough for me to target just on a full slate. Yeah, I can see that. That's why I also threw Molina in there. He's right around the same price um, going up against Eduardo Rodriguez, who has looked good lately, but at times can struggle against righty. So I kind of like Molina there, and he's kind of been hot lately too. Yep. Uh, James McCann is a guy I'll take a look at. Uh, cheap catcher, uh, hits lefties well, going up against Miley, um, who I, I guess has looked solid this season. I mean, he's missing a lot of bats, but uh, he's incredibly wild. But uh, I like McCann here. I mean, over 200 ISO against lefties going back to last year. Um, I like that Tigers offense as far as the tournaments go. Yeah, I agree with you there. It's always good to target. Miley hasn't worked out this year, but uh, eventually it's going to happen, and I think tonight's one of those nights that it might happen. Uh, anyone else to catch you want to talk about? If you go really, really down low, uh, I think Je Jeff Mathis. It's a, an amazing matchup against Malone. Mathis isn't very good, but at the end of the day, it is Tommy Malone, and Mathis does hit lefties well. Um, well, much better than righties, and that's not really saying much because he can't really hit righties too well. Uh, but he's dirt cheap, so uh, I, I'd roster him. Yeah, I'll take salary. I'll take a look there. I mean, I, I like the righties bats there in, in Arizona tonight. Yeah, and, first uh, base. One, one last guy too. Whoa, oh, whoa, first, digging I'm deep. Sneaking, four I'm sneaking him in there. Well, it's not really deep, but uh, just because he's also listed as first base, so he could fall under first base. Um, but Buster Posey, he's just been red hot lately. Uh, and we all know Rich Hill, he uh, is up and down when he's on, he's on. But uh, if he gets a blister or whatever, again, he could be out soon. And Buster Posey's just killing the ball. Yeah, I mean, he's what, a couple home runs here in the last week or so. He has been very good. Uh, first base as well as catcher on DraftKings. I'm uh, looking at first base. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of options to go with tonight. I mean, you know, Goldschmidt against the lefty, I feel like it's going to be a chalky play, but uh, the upside's there, just given the fact that Malone, I mean, um, along a 412 Woba to righties this year, has already allowed six home runs. Um, Goldie's expensive, but definitely worth the look. Yeah, um, if there's one guy that I would try really hard to get into almost all my lineups, it would be Goldschmidt. I mean, he's just, even though his numbers don't look that great against lefties, you know he's still a... a, a a huge hitter against lefties in that ballpark. Obviously, you're going to like him here. Um, so that's my top guy. I can understand using probably any one of like the top five price guys just because they're all in good spots. But I think Goldschmidt is in the best spot. And even though he is the most expensive, I think he's well worth it. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, Joey Votto, I have some, uh, I'm somewhat intrigued because of. Uh, the win there. I mean, both him and Rizzo. I, I think Vado's still actually going to go overlooked because of Rizzo and Goldschmidt. Yeah, you can definitely see that, and that's kind of when you want to jump on uh, Joey Votto when his ownership's really low because he does have all the potential as uh, any one of those other guys. Just in my opinion, Goldschmidt's matchup is uh, the best one out there. Yep. Uh, and I know you're looking at a couple cheaper guys, uh, some guys out there on the West Coast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next guy I had up was Yonder Alonso. I mean, I know you touched on it last uh, pot or so, and he's just been so consistent right now. He has that power that he hasn't really ever seen before, um, but he's just been mashing the ball in. I, I don't mind him. He's a little too expensive for me, but at the same token, you'll get lower ownership uh, for him because of that price tag. 
Yeah, I mean, he always seems to fly under the radar, on, especially on the bigger slates. Um, I'm with you. I mean, in Safeco, um, I mean, we've seen it before. We've seen it actually play pretty small at times. Yeah, absolutely. It's not really the park that everyone thought it was back in the day, but over the past few years, um, it's somewhat kind of turned neutral. Uh, and when you look at the home runs per park, they're always kind of up there. Uh, I don't know if that has a lot to do with Nelson Cruz, but – it, it is what it is, and uh, you kind of have to like uh, Seattle sometimes. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, should draw low ownership tonight. Um, I got to take a look at uh, for cheap, um, cheap as Kenneth kind of Vargas. Um, Freeland's actually not that bad of a pitcher. Um, good ground ball rate. Um, doesn't miss a ton of bats, though, which is my concern. Um, coming into Minnesota, who, I mean, they do have some talented right-handed bats. So Vargas is a cheap guy. I still think there's some power potential there uh, and, and a reasonable high total in that game alone. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that Vargas is one of those hitters who he's still young and he, he needs some more time, but he definitely has that raw power there. So I like him as well. And then uh, my next guy might not be in the lineup, but there's a good chance he should be. Uh, is it Jesus or Jesus? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to Jesus Aguilar. Um, if he's in the lineup, he's a guy who's a pretty good righty masher and or lefty masher. He bats right-handed and going up against Clayton Richard, even though it's not a great ballpark, I, I think he has something in the tank there. Yeah, I'm, I like some of those Milwaukee righties. I know we'll mention another one later on. Um, moving on here from first base, you got anyone else? You want to sneak in or are you done? No, I, I think I went pretty low, so I think we're good with that position right now. Second base, uh, a couple of top options here. I mean, really all the top guys are in decent spots. Uh, I know you're looking at Starling Castro, and I, I like the Yankees. I think in that ballpark they might fly under the radar tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen Kauffman Stadium kind of have big games um, in terms of run total, so I definitely like Starling Castro. He, he's one of those guys who's been another – uh, red hot kind of guy. Uh, that whole Yankees offense has picked it up lately. Uh, with Aaron Judge and Castro and even Ellsbury and Holiday. So they're they're all in play. Um, but for second baseman, I really like Castro. He, he's priced kind of nice. He's not too high for uh, my liking, but uh, he's also not the cheapest. Yeah, no, I, I like him as well. I mean, hitting the middle of that order, uh, Yankees offense is playing really well. Um, I'll take a look at his Daniel Murphy. Um, those lefties against Chad Cool, I like quite a bit here. Uh, over his career, I mean, over 400 Woba allowed this year. Not much has changed. Hard contact rate, 43%. Uh, Murphy, definitely one of the better right-handed hitters in the game. Um, we saw him last year, absolutely crushed right. He's seen it this year. Uh, for the most part, I mean, I think the price isn't all that bad when you look at him tonight's slate. I mean, I know he's up there, but... Um, he's kind of jumbled in with a lot of guys like Cano and Dozier, Castro, Altuve. So um, they might kind of break each other up a bit. Yeah, I don't mind that play at all. My whole thing with that game is just it's in uh, Pittsburgh. I'm not a huge fan of the ballpark. So um, I'm probably going to be staying away from some of the Washington players. But definitely Cole's not really that good of a starter. So I can totally see playing uh, Murphy and some of the other guys. Uh, I know uh, Odor you're taking a look at against Eikhoff, and uh, I think the lefties yeah. here are in play. Yeah, I'm not feeling super happy about it, but you look at Eikhoff, and he gives up a, a good amount of home runs, especially the lefties, and Odor really hasn't put it together in terms of uh, Woba or batting average this year, but he still does have six home runs on the year, so if you're looking for uh, some power that probably not a lot of people will be on, um, I, I like Odor. Yeah, I mean, a cheap source of power, too, so I mean, if he gets that potential there, um, I mean, he has any, he has all the potential in the world to match some of these higher priced guys. Absolutely. I mean, if we all remember uh, early on in the year, he had the two home run games. So, I mean, th there's a lot of potential out of that bat. Uh, clearly, he's not doing it on a consistent basis. That's why he's hitting under 200. But, um, I mean, for one night, you might as well give him a shot. He's priced kind of nicely, a little bit lower than uh, most of the higher priced second baseman as well. Um, <clears throat> gotta take a look at uh, should be in the lineup here. Brandon Drury, uh, career 198 ISO against lefties. Um, with the injury to AJ Pollock, I have to imagine that they're going to be a little bit creative and using guys like Chris Owings and and uh, Drury in the top half of the lineup. So um, he'll be a guy to take a look at. I mean, we touched on Malone, awful, allows a ton of home runs in that ballpark. Um, Arizona bats once again in play. 
Yeah, absolutely. Everyone in Arizona is in play. I think it's just um, if you're willing to take that ownership rate, because I think a lot of people are going to be all on them tonight. Uh, as far as other guys go, I mean, if Ian Happ is in the lineup for Chicago, I'll take a look at him. Uh, super cheap, a talented prospect, uh, and then good matchup against Arroyo. Um, I mean, basically getting an elite pump play if he's in the lineup. Oh, absolutely. Those are the times when you really just need to pounce on it and go for it. Uh, anyone else second base for you? Yeah, I'm not super thrilled by him, but uh, Jonathan Scope, I mean, he's been putting uh, – the bat and the ball a lot more lately. He doesn't have great numbers this year against lefties, but Matt Boyd also isn't the best. So I definitely could understand using them. Obviously, ballpark kind of brings it down a bit, but it is what it is. If you're looking to go contrarian, but still pay up at the position, uh, go with the scoop. Yep. Uh, third base, you got Aaron Nato, Chris Bryant, Miguel Sano all in good spots. Um, these Rocky bats, I, I know a couple that you're on as well. And I mean, I like them because I feel like they are going to fly under the radar just being away from cores. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're going to Minnesota, which is still a pretty good ballpark for hitters. Um, I think it's a little bit uh, higher than neutral. It's not the greatest. Obviously, it's no cores, but I definitely like Arenado here. Uh, Phil Hughes isn't good at all. We uh, all know that. Uh, so don't really overthink it here and just kind of uh, plug them in. No, I like him as well. Uh, Manny Machado's a guy I'll take a look at. Uh, solid numbers against lefties, as you just touched on. Boyd, uh, a guy you can fire against. I mean, uh, home run prone, uh, allowing over 350 Woba since last year to righties. So I think Machado, given he's, at, he's a little bit cheaper than like guys like Bryant Sano and Arenado, um, I, I could take a little bit of a discount there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't mind him at all. Um, again, kind of a poor ballpark in my opinion, and he's also a punk. So sometimes they don't play Machado for that reason, but he, he is a good hitter. I got the bias, huh? Boston bias? I do. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you still have it, even though you moved down south. But Well, I still play Machado. Sorry. But if you notice, though, he's been much better playing the Red Sox this year than when he's when he's not playing them. So That's true. We have that narrative now. I know. So now he's pissed off. Uh, as far as other guys go, I mean, you know, you can go cheap here. Um, there's not a ton that I love, though. Um, I, I think this is a payout position. I mean, Nick Castellanos, maybe I'll take a look at against Miley for a cheap guy. Um, but outside of that, I mean, Jed Jerko is a guy I know you're taking a look at. He's been red hot. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably the lowest I'm going to go with Jerko just because he, he is a good hitter. Uh, weirdly, he doesn't have the best numbers against lefties. So take that. Uh, it is what it is. But other than that, he's a good little hitter. He's batting right in the middle of the order. Uh, a lot of RBI potential. Uh, it's just kind of, I don't know. It's hard to think about what's going to happen with uh, Eduardo Rodriguez because he has been good, but then he gets those games where he just kind of has duds. And weirdly, I have this feeling that tonight's Cardinals game is going to be one of those games. Yeah, I hope not. I kind of like Rodriguez. <laughs> I, I hope not too, but if I'm playing Jed Jerko, I might as well. So there you go. The yeah. bias is away. <laughs> so it's the green. Uh, that was pretty much it for me. I mean, I didn't really have a cheap guy. Alex Bregman I might consider if he's hitting fifth or sixth, but um, against Kohler. I mean, outside of that, I didn't, I'm not in love with a lot of cheap guys. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, lower guys as well, so kind of why I only had a couple. Yep. Shortstop, uh, red hot Carlos Correa. I mean, ton of upside here. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, he's he's been consistent lately too, which is good. And going up against Kohler, I mean, I I don't know. I think it's going to be the ballpark is going to be the issue, but I, I think a lot of these Astros are going to be under-owned. Um, I mean, you take a look at last night, and, and they at first had trouble scoring. So I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about ownership with them, but obviously Korea is one of those guys who's pretty much locked in. Yeah, I mean, I like him as well. I know you were looking if his pivot, I mean, Segura – a little bit cheaper. He always goes a little bit under round. Yeah, I always like Cigar. He always seems to have hitting lead off. He's always sort of in like a good spot. So um, I, obviously, I like Cigar as well. Those are the two guys I really would be looking at the top. Um, and then I do have a, another one later on. Uh, I think if I'm moving down the list, I mean, I like those guys as well. Uh, Chris Owings, I'll take a look at once again. Another Arizona bat um, hits lefties well. Um, 
Addison Russell in that Wrigley Park game with the wind blowing out, I'll consider. So I think those are the probably two cheaper guys that I'll use. Yep, I can totally see that. Uh, last guy I have on my list would be uh, Eduardo Escobar. I mean, he's not the best, but at the end of the day, he's priced pretty uh, considerably less than the other guys, and he's in a good spot uh, matchup-wise. So I, I like him here. Yeah, it hasn't been bad against lefties this year. Yeah, totally got to go with him. <laughs> uh, moving to outfield, uh, Charlie Blackman's the guy you were looking at. Uh, I feel like he's going to be overlooked tonight uh, going up against Hughes, who's – as you said, not good at all. Um, and Blackman's one of those guys, he's a course hitter, but he hits well away from home too. Yeah, and you do have the uh, stolen base factor with him, which is always a good threat. So sometimes if you have a decision between him and uh, Cargo, you sometimes want to go with Blackman just because of that. So I like Blackman here. He leads off, has more opportunities to uh, do some damage against Phil Hughes. Yep. Uh, a couple of outfielders I like. I mean, uh, Justin Upton, J.D. Martinez. Uh, Martinez back in the lineup going up against Miley. Uh, I still feel like these Tiger bats are going to be a little bit under own because I think people are done picking on Miley or trying to at least. Um, as you said, I mean, it's not the greatest ballpark there in Detroit, but warm weather does help a little bit. Um, and they're just – they're rightly priced. I mean, 35 3600 on FanDuel, uh, low to mid fours on DK. So, I mean, uh, you can get a lot of upside at a mid-tier price. One of these starts, Miley is going to have a bad start. Like he's just been so make it tonight, terrible, but some, but somehow he's he's getting out of things and four walks here, five walks here. I don't know how it's even happening. So, I I don't know. I think tonight has to be the night. If he doesn't, I think I'm going to play Miley the rest of the way, every single start. Is that going to be a deal? I think so, and I think if he if he gets through a reasonable outing, I think I'm just done. I'm going to focus all my attention on WNBA. Yeah, or just yeah, just not play on Miley starts because it's so frustrating. Yeah, so I, I, I like the Tigers. I I do think this tonight's the night. All right, all right. Let's, let's hope. Um, as far as other guys, me, uh, I like yes, my Tomas once again to continue that Arizona trend. I feel like he's rightly priced um, for where he is. Big upside out of him. Good ballpark once again. Um, you know, just to continue that Arizona trend. No, I see that. I think Tigers and Arizona are two teams that I'll probably have a lot of tonight um, for obvious reasons. Uh, I know you were looking at uh, Domingo Santana was another guy you were talking from the Milwaukee side. Um, and I feel like you, you're you kind of always in between like Broxton, Santana, Perez. Like you just – you got to figure out who's going to be the right one. Yeah, I don't know. I, this whole Clayton Richard thing pissed me off because like he was in such a – terrible spot last time he went seven innings one run away from petco he has a decent era at petco it's like uh terrible it's over five and i just i don't know what to make of this guy so i think if you if you send out enough milwaukee bullets tonight i think one of them will hit um but if i had to make a decision i'd probably go towards more uh santana and uh perez tonight i don't know broxton i'm not really feeling it no he got the vibe you're, you're just kind of you woke up and you're like you know what it's going to be a Brox and it's going to be a Perez night or Santana night. And on that, yeah, on that, I also uh, wrote in my notes, but I'm back on the Bellinger train. If, if it's just for one night, I think tonight is going to be it. I don't know why. I just woke up and that's what I felt. <laughs> every day every day's a Bellinger night. Come on. Uh, I don't know. He, he He's one of those guys where he's getting kind of overpriced now, so you got to wait till he's kind of getting in a better spot uh, price-wise and then kind of utilize them. And then then you got to analyze everyone else on the slate to try to get him at a good ownership rate because if you don't, then he'll be like 40%. And then when he has a bad outing, you get all upset. So, um, Like last night. Yeah, exactly. He was like 45%, and that's because there was like seven games. Uh, tonight with 13, it might be a little bit better. Plus, people might be off him because he wasn't the greatest so yeah. that's my spiel. Uh, a couple guys you're looking at, I know um, Brett Gardner, uh, Scott Shebler. I love Shebler. I think it's a good, good GPP call there. Yeah, absolutely. Like even though he bats six, he still has a, a huge potential. I mean, he's shown uh, power this year, so I, I like him. And it's, he's just been a good hitter. It's all you can say. He's, he's never really priced too high. He's always like in the mid range, so you can always kind of fit him in. Yeah, and going up against Lackey, I mean, Lackey's – it's not a slouch, but he is what he is at this career. Um, and with that wind blowing out, I mean, you know, Wrigley's going to play incredibly small tonight. 
Totally. And the last guy I will mention is the, I can never say his name right, but I think it's Trey Mancini. Is that correct? Yep. Whenever I see his name, I just see machine. So I just. He's been a machine. I know. I mean, you got to pick, he's, he's like a lot of guys. You got to pick his spots. Um, yep. But one of these kind of, I think tonight's one of those nights. The only bad thing is the ballpark, but you know what? I got to get over my ballpark issues. So we'll go from, we'll move on. Uh, I think my value guy here, Joey Ricard, going up against Boyd, uh, 352 Wobot in his career against lefties, 175 ISO. Should be leaning off there tonight. So a good cheap source of value with some potential. Um, I mean, I don't mind attacking that game. Yeah, so you're not afraid of uh, the ballpark then as well. No. no. Oh, good for you. Uh, I mean, like weather, four, weather warms up here. What was that? Some people are going to hit 420. Isn't it like 420 to center field, or is that the park that they brought the uh, the fence in because it was too far? I think it's – oh, I think they brought it in a little bit. Yeah, because people couldn't hit it out there. They complained. That's when Curtis Granderson was in Detroit, guys. We're going way back to the kids who don't even know. It was a much bigger park back then. It was huge. I, the dimensions of that field are, are still weird. Had, you know what's funny is <laughs> – they still had uh, terrible starting pitchers like Jeremy Bonderman, and that was oh like a million square feet in there. And it's like, it's just a huge ballpark, and he still was terrible. So Bonderman, man, that's going back. That's like going back to like a an age of bad pitching, but like it wasn't too far ago. I miss Rich Harden, to be honest with you. He was the best, and then he just flamed out. Yeah, those are good days. Harden, Mark Pryor, do you remember him? Yeah, yeah. Pryor, Mulder. Yep. Oh, yeah, I know. Oakland, they had the best starting pitchers, Zito, and then he stunk. Um, and they trade him away. DFS, right? Yeah. We're talking about DFS? Yeah, our, our late pod ramblings. We're, we're done with our picks. For like an hour. But yeah, that, that was pretty much our picks, guys. Um, but yeah. if you'd like to hear more of us, just let us know. And we can yeah. go on and on about, uh, about Jeremy Bonderman. It? Early 2000s, mid 2000s uh, baseball. Yeah, I think hey, that Oakland team was fun. Do like, I like that Oakland team. I mean, most kids only know them from watching Moneyball, but they were actually a good team, yeah. and they actually had good personalities. Do you know? Since we're going on this, we'll go on uh, Tasso's tidbit right here. Um, do you remember the pitching coach for Oakland back in that time period? No went to the Mets after. Anyways, Rick Reed, what has he recently done in like the last year? Uh, Ruined Matt Harvey? No. I don't think he's still a pitching coach, but that was good. Um, He wrote a book, (laughs) and I'm not not getting sponsored, but it looks like an interesting book, and it's the forwards written by Billy Bean, Um, and it's all about uh, getting your mind straight or whatnot. That's something we have never done. No, no, not at all. (laughs) Um, we should probably end this before we keep rambling, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. So picks are done. Uh, good luck tonight, guys. And yeah. uh, you can check out dailyfantasycafe.com for our tools and their content.